Hey guys, welcome to Left Seat Adventures. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to install weather pack connectors, just like these. We're starting right now. In this case, they are the Seal All brand connector. Now these are real simple to put together, but it does help if you have some of the special tools to do this job. This is the specific crimper sold by Seal All. This both crimps the terminal to the wire and to the silicone seal that you'll see. Different sizes for each. If you make a mistake or something needs to be changed, there's this pin removal tool. You actually have it in the end and you can push the terminal out. These connectors come in multiple sizes. Here's our single, a double, but now you can also get a three and a four and there's some other sizes out there as well. So for this video, we're only gonna focus on the single pod connector. Uh, it's the same concept for all the multi ones, you just have more wires. When you order these, you get what they call the empty shell of the connector, which is both halves. And separately, you order the terminals that go inside. Also come with these color coded silicone seals. So, one thing to note that's in the manual the male connector wants you to use a female terminal, and the female connector then wants you to use the male. As you can see, these terminal sizes are color coded. We've got the purple one for 18 to 20 gauge, and the green ones are 14 to 16 gauge. If you look closer, you can also see the terminal size is different to accommodate the differing wire sizes. Now, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to focus on the single pot connector. The multi-pot ones are going to be the same process, you just have more wires. I've got some 18 gauge wire, so we've got our 18 to 20 gauge terminals. You can see they're on this strip from when they're formed. Now, you can rock these back and forth and bend them. So what I tend to do is just cut it. And same thing over here. All right, so the next thing we gotta do is prep our wire. And you see, this has already been cut and stripped before, but the manual is pretty clear to make sure you got a fresh cut. They're very specific that the stripped wire should be in very good condition. We're gonna do some new ends. The manual states to have the stripped wire about five and a half millimeters plus or minus 0.5 millimeters. But realistically, if you just set it up to five millimeters, you'll be good. We have these automatic wire strippers that I've already set the five millimeters. You just pop it in, hits the backstop, grip and rip it. And again. Now we're gonna make sure these we twist these real good. Because once we put the silicone seal on it, it's actually possible if you have a loose strand to puncture that seal. And now if you're worried about sealing from the elements, now it's completely useless. We got our tape, check our length, just a touch long. And yes, I am actually gonna trim this down. Make sure this is twisted properly. Take your appropriate seal. And I actually twist righty tighty. As I twist the wires righty tighty. So I'll do the same thing with the seal so it doesn't bind up. It's worth noting that the manual actually suggests adding the seal before stripping the wires. This is probably the best practice. And we bring that to the edge of the insulation. Take our terminal. This is a section that crimps around the silicone seal. This is a section that crimps around the wire. This right here is kind of like a stop for your crimpers. And then this is also, this is the spring tabs that hold it into the connector. So if you have the seal all crimper, I already know that the, the 18 to 20 is number three on here. There's the rounded portion for the bottom of the connector. And then you see that ramp profile that brings the two tabs together. And we squeeze. You squeeze the heck out of that and then it's just what it needs to be. Yep, that looks good. Then next we're going to move on to number five here. Again, bottom of the terminal, top, and that ramp profile will bring those tabs together. Line it up, we want to make sure it's centered. Bring it around so you can see it. And you, can, you can see that working together. Let me just close it down. Look at that. One perfect connector. Do the same thing on the other side. Check our twist. Pop our seal on, check our twist again. Now we got our male terminal, number three on our crimper, back to number five. From the other side. So you could leave these just as they are, pop them in your connector and go from there. But for a little bit of added security, I'm gonna go ahead and add some solder into these crimps. Get some in the end there. And then I work some into the crimp as well. You don't want to overload these and then end up having a problem getting these terminals to fit in the connector. Just so you can get enough in there that it actually sits flush with this. 
and it works down into the wiring. See our terminals are ready to go. So as we said before, female terminal, male terminal, female terminal goes into male connector, male terminal goes into female connector. And it's real simple. They just, this part that we crimped and we soldered, keep that up with the connector and then push it in. You'll hear a click. One more time, listen for the click. There it is. That's all there is to it. Then you close the latch here, this latch here. And now, take a look down and see. Male in the female connector, female terminal, male connector. Now we just bring them together. Perfect. And we got a nice solid connection that's also weatherproof, vibration resistant, everything you need, whether it be automotive, motorsports. Uh, power sports, motorcycles, aircraft, marine. These are great connectors. Let's say you goofed up somewhere and you got to take these terminals out. First, we got to open up the connector. Of course, carefully, try not to break that. Then we take our pin removal tool, just push it in, and we should be able to work that right out of the back. That's a good seal. You don't want to make a habit of doing it because you see these spring tabs are a little bit more compressed than what they were, but a couple times, and eh, it's perfectly okay. See, that's not bad at all, is it? As always, thank you for watching. And if you want to see more videos about owning, working on, and of course, flying small airplanes, please check out our channel page and hit that subscribe button to see more from me at Less Seen Adventures.